Now that we know how to work exponents and radicals, let's talk about how to solve equations using exponents and radicals. So imagine you're given something like this. Pretty basic, but a good starting point. x squared equals 25. What is x? Well, you could think, well, what squared is 25? Well, it's 5. Yeah, you could do it that way, but it's better to know the kind of official way to do it. So to get rid of, to get x by itself, because remember that's the basic thing we need for algebra, to get x by itself, we need to remove this squared. So we use the inverse operation. We just square root this. So if we square root the left side by this other rule, we've got to square root the, the right side. So what's the square root of x squared? Well, we looked at this earlier. It's just x. And the square root of 25 is 5. But note, because of the way this works, you can also get negative 5. Whenever you square root a number when you're doing these equations, you're going to get the positive and the negative because 5 squared is 25 and negative 5 squared is 25. So that's the answer for that one. How about if we had something like x to the half equals 4? Well, this is the same thing as the square root of x equals 4. And again, I want to get x by itself without anything surrounding it. So let's just square both sides to get rid of the square root. And I do that. And here I'm going to get x is 16. And note here there's no negative root because you can't do the square root of negative 16. That gives you an imaginary number. There's no imaginary numbers on the SAT. How about something a bit more complex? What about, let's see, x to the 3 halves equals 27. Well, now things are getting a bit crazy. Well, break it up. So this is the same thing as x cubed square rooted. So we could look at it, for instance, as the square root of x cubed. Well, let's go ahead and square both sides just to get rid of the square root. I do that, I'm left with x cubed equals, let me get my calculator, okay, 27 squared is 729. And now I go ahead and cube root both sides. And when I do that, I'm going to get, let's see, three, I screwed this up, 729 cube root. Oh, I messed it up. Well, this calculator is being annoying. Hold on one second. Oh, it does a cube root right here. So 729 cube rooted is nine. So this turns out to be 9 for that example. So you could do it that way. You also could say, well, this is the same thing. x to the 3 halves equals 27. I can just raise both sides to the 2 thirds power. And then it's the same thing as cube rooting 27 and then squaring it. Either way, you can do it a lot of different ways. The point is you just got to unwind what the equation has done to get back to x equals. Let's look at another example. How about something like 3 times the square root of x minus 1 plus 2 equals 11. So again, unwind everything like we know in algebra. Let's leave the square root to the end. Let's just get the square root by itself. Because if we squared both sides now, we're going to get a horrible mess. So let's first subtract 2 from both sides. And I get 3 square root of x minus 1 equals 9. Divide both sides by 3. I'm going to get square root of x minus 1 equals 3. Now I'll go ahead and square both sides. And I'm going to get x minus 1 equals 9. So finally, x equals 10. And we can go back and check this. In fact, it's a good idea to check it when you're dealing with these radical equations because sometimes things get a bit weird. But we see here 10 minus 1 is 9, and uh, the square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. So this checks out, and we're all good. Final example is going to be something like this. 2 to the x equals 64. And we're going to see a lot of questions on this kind of thing in the SAT Math Tactics, especially the exponents video. So I'm not going to do too many of these now. But the basic idea when you see things like this is you don't have to worry about logs or LNs. That's th that stuff's not on the test. We need to get these to have the same base. So we already have 2 to the x. We're not doing anything else with that. But 64, when you think about it, is itself a power of 2. It's 2 to the, let's say, 2 times 2 is 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. This is the same thing as 2 to the 6. So when we write this as 2 to the 6, we see, oh, well, wait a minute. Now that my bases are the same, I just look at my exponents. In order for this side to equal this side, this is going to have to equal 6 as well. So in this particular example, x will be 6. And that's a very simple example of what you'll see on the SAT. Let's leave the more complex, complex examples of exponent and radical problems to the uh, SAT Math Tactics series.